Today we're going to look at computer simulations. We covered this briefly in Hire and we looked at the difference between simulations and animations. We'll just refresh ourselves on that today, but we're going to look at something a bit more in depth. And the two main types of simulation that we need for advanced Hire are finite element analysis, sometimes that's shortened to FEA, and we're also going to look at computational flow dynamics or CFD. What are they and why do we use them? As we've seen or talked about in higher, simulations are used to test a product. Designers have to be careful that any product that they come up with and any product that goes out into the market will actually do what it's supposed to do. If they don't do that, then problems are going to occur. People certainly aren't going to buy their product again and they might even get some kind of action taken against them. So designers use simulations to make sure that anything they've come up with is something that's what's called fit for purpose. And they're very different from animations and just to remind you an animation is something that you watch but you've got no say in what the outcome can be. You may get an animation for example from Ikea that shows you how a, a bedroom unit might fit together and we've also got entertainment animations like Toy Story. You can't change what happens you can only watch. Designers use these simulations to find any issues that might occur. What we don't want as a company or a designer or an individual is to have any financial penalty. We don't want anyone to get hurt when using our products and we certainly don't want our reputation to be damaged because people are using the products and they're either not doing what they're supposed to do or they're causing um, injury or they're causing stress or they just don't do what they're supposed to do. So the reputation for a company is very important. So the designers that are designing products for these companies have to make sure that they work before the public ever get their hands on them. In advanced hire, as I said at the start, we're going to look at two types of simulation. One is called finite element analysis and the second one is called computational flow or sometimes fluid dynamics. The good news is you don't need to know much about how they work. You just need to have an idea where and why they would be used and it's mainly for your project. Although within the exam itself there are some questions to do with simulations and the expectation is that you could at least describe why and how they're used. No mathematics involved at all. First of all we're going to look at finite element analysis or FEA. And this is used by designers to look at the stress and the strain that a product will undergo in its everyday use. Think about something as simple as a can opener in your kitchen. Normally a can opener will be the type that's got the two handles on it. You put it on the can and you squeeze the handles together. And you can feel through the handles that there's quite a lot of pressure involved in that. The designer therefore has to make sure that the materials and the way that the materials have been put together are going to work before it ever lands on the shelf. Designers can also use it to work out the best material. We tend to talk about things being made out of plastic, made out of wood or made out of steel. That's a very simplistic view. There are lots of different kinds of plastic, lots of different varieties of wood and lots of different grades and types of metal, steel being just one of them. And what a designer has to do is make sure that whatever material they use for making their product it performs the way that they have intended it to and the way that's going to be useful for the end user. The designer can also use a simulation to see how parts connect together and highlight any weaknesses that might come about because of that. Thinking back to that can opener again, if you've ever bought one of the really cheap can openers, maybe you've needed one in a hurry and there's only been uh, a certain amount of shops open and you found a little cheap silvery coloured steel can opener. They look quite robust, but what we find is after a couple of weeks of using it, that actually they're not very good. And that's because there's no real testing has been done on those. Designers can also use finite element analysis to see how a product will work after a period of time. There's a condition happens in metals called fatigue, where if something is moved backwards and forwards over a long period of time, it can lead to a weakness in the metal. If you think about taking a paper clip 
and bending it backwards and forwards, after maybe 15 or 20 times of doing that, the paperclip snaps, and that's due to metal fatigue. So once again, simulation can be used to see how long a product will work before this kind of condition or this kind of issue would occur. What does all that do? Well, it allows a designer to come up with the most efficient and best designed product, something that a customer is going to use over and over again, and that a customer is going to be happy using, and would perhaps come back in the future and buy a similar product from the same company. Just to have a look at what finite element analysis involves, let's take the case of a bike. On the left-hand side here, we'll see the frame of a bike. It's something you should be fairly familiar with because a lot of bike frames tend to follow this same pattern. That's because this way of making bike frames is a very efficient way. What designers are always looking for is a way of making bike frames lighter, but still keeping the strength. What we don't want are big, heavy frame bikes, which are difficult to pedal, especially if you're trying to pedal uphill. So we're looking for frames which are sleek, and light but still strong enough to do the job that they're designed for. On the left hand side you'll see the two parts of the frame where the wheel connects to at the back and along to the right hand side you'll see the tube that the handlebars goes through and you'll also see where the seat and the crank with the pedals connect onto it. If I was designing this I would then have to look at what the forces involved in riding a bike are. This is a very simple diagram just showing a rider on a bike and giving a rough indication of where the forces work. If I was designing this frame, I would have a lot more information, but this is just to give you an idea of what's involved. The designer would dare take these forces and the directions of the forces, which is important, and put them into a program like Inventor. And then it would run what's called a simulation. And from that simulation, they would get something that looks a little bit like this. What we can see down the left hand side of the page is all the data that we put in and all the results that came from that. In the main part of the screen we can see the frame and the colours give us an indication of where there is high stress and strain and where there is less stress and strain. And from this we can very quickly see that the area which is under the most pressure if you like is up where that handlebar tube goes through. That's because we're leaning on it and it's also dealing with the forces involved when we turn to go around the corner. So there's quite a lot of different stress and strain. And we can also see just to the side of that, there's a little outline showing you how much that handlebar tube deflects. That means how much it moves during use. So there's a little bit of movement in the metal. And finally down the right hand side we can see a bar which gives an indication of the, the value of the stress and the strain which is involved in it. Now if I was a designer this would be really important to me to understand those numbers but what we need in this course is just an understanding of what it is. So we can see quite clearly the area of high stress and the area of low stress. So that's finite element analysis in a simple form. Where do we use it? Well we can use it in single components this part here that you can see at the top left hand corner, this is a part of an engine. This is called a connecting rod, which connects the crankshaft of the engine to the piston. And that's involved in the conversion of up and down movement into rotational movement. And it's got an awful lot of forces and pressure to deal with. And what we can see is just to the left hand side at the small circular end of it, we can see the areas of red, which once again are indicating where the greatest amount of stress is involved. We could also use it for building large structures like bridges and seeing how they would react to traffic loads or wind loads. And again we can see this box girder design and we can get an indication of where the greatest stress and strain is involved in it. And here we have a whole range of everyday products. And if we look down at the bottom right hand corner Finite element analysis would even give us a possibility of simulating the crash testing of cars. Every new car which is on, comes onto the market has to have a rating about how well it stands up to a crash. Traditionally how that was done was we put crash test dummies inside the cars and we ran them into brick walls to see how they deformed and how they broke up. Increasingly that 
type of testing can be done using computers through finite element analysis. And once again, we can see all the colours which are involved. The blue colours tend to be areas of low stress and strain, and the red colours are where high areas of stress and strain are involved. So that's finite element analysis. We're now going to look at computational flow dynamics, which again is a simulation, but this is involved with gases and fluids. Now we're surrounded by gas and fluid every day. The air that we walk through is a gas. And we have to, as designers, we have to make sure that anything we design or anything that we make um, interacts in a way which is positive. If we don't do that, then we can have quite catastrophic problems. And if we think about aerodynamics, which is a, a part of computational flow dynamics, if we don't get the aerodynamics correct for aeroplanes, then there is a possibility that they would crash. And you can imagine the, the kind of consequences that are involved with a plane crash. So getting these simulations correct is, is crucially important. And just like in finite element analysis, what the designer is trying to do is make sure that they're spotting any problem with their design before it ever goes into production. Because once it's in production, it's very difficult and costly to go back and amend things. All we've got here are three little simulations involved with computational flow dynamics. In the top left hand corner, we'll see what's called flow down a pipe. Now, it may be a little bit difficult to see on your screen, but it's what's called turbulent flow. And that means that the fluid is going down there in a way which isn't the most efficient. And you can almost tell that by the, the animation itself, the animation within the simulation. If you go to the image just below that, this would be an architectural simulation. And this is looking at flow around skyscrapers. And it's looking at how pollution and airflow can be affected by structures, where they're built, how tall they're built, and what they're built from. And what we can see here is that there's quite a lot of turbulence around the buildings on the right hand side. You can see that little circular airflow. And finally, going back to aerodynamics, on the right hand side, we've got the model, simulated model of a fighter jet, and we can see the airflow going across the wings. And as the airflow comes in in a nice smooth green pattern, as it hits the wings, it then comes off the wings in a very turbulent flow. And that turbulence is what affects how that plane flies. All these three examples are from computational flow dynamics.